Using a feature phone in 2016 is a special kind of hell. No apps, a lackluster camera, and a keypad that dates back to 1963. Woof. But if you get one that's ruggedized, there's a saving grace to the dumb phone that anyone living close to the coast can understand. It's an awesome vacation phone. I'm Michael Fisher, and it's the 4th of July weekend, so Mr. Mobile is off to the seashore with the Kia Serra Dura XE. Okay, so obviously, settings like this aren't what the Dura line was built for. This is a phone for construction workers and truck drivers who need buttons you can push with work gloves on, loud push-to-talk speakerphones, and military-grade durability. It's that last feature that makes this thing so useful when it comes to sun-soaked summer weekends. The Dura XE packs IPX5 and IPX8 ratings for water spray and continuous immersion, meaning it'll keep on working even when it's in over its head. Now, you guys are pretty smart, so you're probably saying, hold the phone, Fisher. We've had waterproof smartphones for years now. Why wouldn't I just buy one of them and keep all my features? Well, you've got a point there. But here's where old-school construction comes into play. You see, a water-resistant smartphone like the Samsung Galaxy S7 still leaves its ports exposed. The USB connector and speaker and headphone jack are allowed to flood, which is fine because they're designed to handle that. Once they dry off, they work fine. But that's with fresh water. Salt water is pure, straight poison to electronics, and it works fast. I took these shots with the Samsung Galaxy S4 Active back in 2013, and by the time the sun went down, the phone's headphone jack was completely shot, never to function again. So the open ports approach, which helps keep the phone thin, actually isn't the best. The Dura XE and phones like it use the old method of waterproofing, big flaps like missile hatches that lock down into gaskets to keep water from getting inside. This makes the phone huge, a big meatball in a pocket, but it also means that salt water should be no more harmful than fresh, because it's not getting anywhere near the guts. I am a little worried about those charging pads on the back, and if you are too, give the phone a quick freshwater splash after your swim. After two days of filming on the beach, I did this routinely, and the phone is still fine thus far. Now, there are smartphones that use the bulky method of waterproofing as well, but first of all, those phones tend to be not very good. And more to the point, touchscreens hate being wet. Water droplets temporarily bridge the electrodes of the capacitive grid, generating all kinds of confusing inputs. Salt water only makes that worse. And let's not even bring up sunscreen, hot dog mustard, or any of the other exciting beach stuff you might get on your phone. For this same reason, the mentality of, oh, I'll just put a case on my iPhone, kind of breaks down too. The thing is still going to be gross by the end of the day. And when little grains of sand find their way inside the case, well, you're going to have a bad time. Once again, the old ways to the rescue. The physical keys don't care whether they're wet or not, so you can still text your heart out once you remember how XT9 predictive text works. Voice calls are more comfy on a clamshell too, so that's another win. There's not a single app in sight, so all those little tasks your coworkers ping you to do on Slack or Hangouts, well, they'll just have to wait. And if you finish that book on your Kindle and need to download another, or you're one of those daredevils who brings an iPad or a Chromebook to the water, this phone has LTE and Wi-Fi hotspot baked into its Android-based OS. Crazy, right? Look, am I advocating buying a Dura XE just so you can have a better beach and boat phone? Not at all. Like I said, carrying a dumb phone in 2016 is just miserable in so many ways. Plus, it's too pricey to justify as a novelty purchase. Now, if you're in the market for a rugged glove box phone, or you're a prepper looking for a good emergency handset, or an ultra-minimalist who's just had it with smartphones for whatever reason, well, then this is your dream device. Most likely, though, if you're familiar with this phone, it probably means your employer has issued you one. And if that's the case, congratulations. You can stop thinking of it as an antique clunker and start thinking of it as a sweet vacation phone.
That's all for this week, folks. Until next time, Mr. Mubble is off to take in the sunshine. Hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you dug this video, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.